Okay, the next step in the process of modeling our uh, body around the hand mixer is to do some uh, solid modeling work. So what we're going to do is go ahead and in place activate back into uh, the uh, body or the hand mixer body. And what I want to point out is, you know, we were working with a lot of profiles and then a lot of surfaces that we created. And if you'd like to clean that up a little bit so that you really don't want to, maybe you don't want to look at all of these particular profiles, what you can do is you can use your shift key and sl multiple select or use control and select different ones. And what we can do is create a, um, a group. And then once that group is created, I'm simply going to rename it and I'm going to call it uh, sketching group. So now underneath that group, all of those sketches will be easy to find. And then I'm going to do the same with all of the surfaces that we created. So it's just kind of a nice little tool to allow you to kind of group things together and organize. And here we'll just call this uh, surface group. So now we've got our two groups uh, created. So what we want to do is go ahead and continue with the design. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of some material in the middle here for the hand to be able to hold this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the group, uh, excuse me, the sketching group, and I'm going to turn on this external hand area, handle area, and internal, or interior handle. you notice it's just a couple of 2D sketches. It kind of gives us the overall view of this. Then what I'm going to do is project the outside one to the body. And let's change that to body so it gets the whole body. And I want to go in both directions. And you'll notice what it does is it creates two curves, one on each side. So I can turn off that external handle just to make it a little bit less confusing of what we're actually working with. Now I like to grab the body at this point and we have the capability to uh, to actually hide and that allows us just to see these two curves. Now we left another curve on earlier so let's go ahead and hide that as well. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is use the blue surf command again and just simply identify and create that first portion and then we'll come and identify the last curve which creates this really cool internal curve or surface that we can use to remove material from the inside of uh, the, uh, the body that we're creating. So let's go ahead and turn off that curve. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, the body and I'm going to show it. Now Let's go ahead and remove that material. We're going to use a Boolean operation. I'm going to identify that surface that we created and then we just have to tell it which side we want to remove the material from and Boolean in, in into the solid. So we'll go to the inside and you'll notice that it develops a very nice looking cutout on the inside of our model. Another thing that we need to create is the boss where the thumb is for the switch. In order to do that, we'll go over and we're going to use the extrude command and we're going to use a parallel reference plane option. Again, using off the top reference plane, we're going to come up about, oh, let's come up about 135 millimeters, give or take. Again, I always like to area up on the area that I'm working in. And actually, I'm going to turn on reference planes here. I'm going to use these reference planes. Then I'm going to come up to the circle command and underneath you'll notice there's several options here. I'm going to use ellipse by center. Just get right on that reference plane and create a real quick ellipse. I want to dimension this though. I want it to be in the right location. So I'm going to dimension the center of it over to this reference plane here. And we'll give it a value of say uh, 83. Now we also can change the value of our ellipse. And in this case this needs to be 22 and let's make this about 18, something to that effect. So now we have our ellipse created or the shape that we want to create and it has the correct dimensions. So when we come out we can project this um, symmetrically or we can just say you know what let's just go to next in the bottom in the down direction and it will go to next 
and meet up with the rest of the model. So you can see that the you know the parts really starting to take some pretty good shape. Now I do want to add a little bit of contour to the top of this boss. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use the cut command and I'm going to go from the front view. And then once we're in the front view, I'm going to come up to the uh, line command and come down and grab the curve option and just develop a curve which um, you know allows us to add some shape to the top of this. Now once that curve's drawn you can always grab a control point and modify it however you want it to look. You know maybe you want it to be a little bit farther down in the front. Um, once we've got that developed then we can simply tell it which direction we want to remove the material and it does so very quickly. Again we used an open profile uh, to do that. Well we've got the general shape uh, looking pretty good here so I think it's go ahead and time it's it's a good time to go ahead and add some rounds and so I'm gonna go to the round command let's change this to two millimeters and we'll apply two millimeter to the top and let's also apply a two millimeter to the two side uh, to our cutout and that looks good so we'll accept that then I'm gonna change this value to four millimeters while we stay in the command and this time I'm gonna change it to chain and let's get the uh, area around the boss at four millimeters. I'm also going to go to the bottom side while I stay in this command, which is kind of cool. It allows me to kind of step around and pick the things that I need. I'm going to get these um, three bottom faces and this back face. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to not select the edge corner, so by holding the shift key down, we can deselect these two edges from the round operation. And then when I right mouse button click to accept, and then to preview, Solid Edge ST4 will generate uh, those rounds for us very quickly. And now our model is, is uh, rounded. One other tool that I think is really kind of nice um, is if you go to the Inspect tab, maybe we want to look at just how smooth these surfaces are. We have a command called Zebra Stripes and I can turn it on and you can see that it kind of converts to Zebra Stripes allowing you to see how the contours flow or the surfaces are flow between each other. Obviously you can tell where the rounds were put but notice up here where we have the tangent continuous condition and how those Zebra Stripes just kind of flow across all three surfaces. It's a really nice way of of inspecting your model as far as surfaces are created are created now obviously you can change these colors you can change the uh, number of stripes if you want to do so or the stripe thickness maybe you want them thin or you want them thick just depending on what you want to do but again a really nice tool to inspect your model inspect the surfacing of your model and make sure everything looks as it should and when you're done you can just simply turn it back off the next thing that we need to do is to be able to accommodate internal components for this body. Again, this is still just a solid model. So what I'm going to use is the thin wall command. And for the common thickness, we'll just go ahead and use the one millimeter. So I'll just accept that. Now, we don't really have any open faces, so I'm just going to go ahead and click the preview button. And it should generate our thin wall, which you can see it did. Now it's kind of hard to see and obviously we can go to different, we've got several different options so we can, you know, view internal, internal faces and stuff. But the kind of thing I like to do is go to the, um, what we call set planes, where I can pick, for example, maybe pick this right plane and then I can, as I pull it forward, I can dynamically look at the internal components of our file here. So it kind of gives you some good and then when you click on it it allows you to inspect and you can see the all of the internal faces that were generated from that thin wall. And then of course you can just turn it off. Again a really neat tool for visually inspecting 
uh, your model. Okay, so we've actually got this uh, to a pretty good state where I'm actually just going to go ahead and save this model. And then what I'm going to do is uh, return back to the top level, just kind of see how we are matching up with our design. And you can see that we're, you can see where the switch comes out of the, uh, the boss that we created and everything looks uh, very close. So the uh, industrial designer will be happy that we've followed those particular designs. So now what we want to do is we want to actually, uh, obviously we have to be able to take the bottom apart from the top so that the components can be put inside. How would we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and at this top level, let's go ahead and save. And then I'm going to actually open up this, this model. Again, it's just a single part file. And I'm going to go back to my sketches, and you'll notice at the bottom we've got uh, something called split, uh, split surf curve. It's just a sketch. But what it's going to uh, help us do is it's going to allow us to create a surface. So we'll go to a surface, just generate a surface from this sketch. And then once that's done, <clears throat> once the surface is generated, I'm going to save the model, and then I'm going to run a command we call divide part. And basically what it allows us to do is build two parts from a single part file. Basically it just tells us to identify the surface, and then when we do that, it's going to bring up a dialog box, giving us an option to define what these part models are going to be called. Now obviously this is the top, so I'm going to give it the name top. The second model is the bottom, so I'm going to give it the obvious name of bottom. So you just have to click in the view and then key in bottom. So now we have a top and a bottom part. Now we just named them. What we want to do is we want to actually select both of these and then we're going to do save selected file. So what this does is it basically it divides this part into two parts and then this little command will actually go out and create a separate file for the top part and the bottom part. Now when it's done we can close the file and in this case I'm going to turn that split curve back off and I can turn off that extruded surface and just to make sure we don't, uh, you know, lose any of our information, if I want to go home and come back and work on it the next day, I, I like to just go ahead and close and save. And so now what we can do is we can close this file, go back to our top level assembly. Now, at the assembly level, we still have just a single part file. But what we can do is um, we've got those two independent files that we created but we kind of would like to use those as an assembly now and replace this single part file with those two uh, top and bottom files. Well, we've got a command. We allow our users to generate macros and do special things. And in this case, we've got something called rebuild divide part. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off this particular command. Now what this does is it's going to bring up a dialog. And it's going to allow us to identify both the top and bottom part that we generated. Basically, I'm looking in the working folder, that's where this assembly is, and I'm going to identify uh, the bottom, and it, it will go out and find the bottom part, and then it's going to display it so we know that we got the right part. Then I'm going to hold the control key down and grab the top part, and then what I'm going to do is just going to come over and I'm going to process, and what this is going to do is take those two parts and create an assembly from those two parts very quickly and there's the assembly. Now it looks just like the part file. Instead though it's a top and a bottom part. So what I'm going to do is save this as this assembly and I'm just going to call it HM for hand mixer and we'll just save over top of uh, the other one that was created there and then I can close this file out. Now here we are back at our top level assembly what I want to do now is simply replace this single part file 
let's come over to modify and use the replace part and I'm going to replace this part with the new assembly that we just generated and what it does is it replaces that part file now with this subassembly or assembly of the top and bottom now one thing I also want to do is I'm not really interested in this being a subassembly so if I come over and do a disperse I can simply move that top and bottom part to this top level assembly called body design and now at the top level I have the bottom part and I have the top part and if I want to turn one off I can if I want to turn the top on and turn the bottom off I can inspect my model from there again a good way to divide your part maybe for plastic part design you want to divide the parts so that they will fit together now let's just say for example we want to make some more modifications it's a it's a part file so I can in place activate into it just like it did the other part when I developed it and let's say I want to put these parts together so maybe I want to add uh, in this case let's go ahead and add a, a, a one of our some of our uh, options that we have under the thin wall one is called a lip maybe I want to add a lip so that I can place a lip and a groove on between the top and bottom part where they'll fit together real nice well if I come in and just select this inside curve and I want to make sure that I get it all the way around so I'm going to pick the inside and then accept it and you're going to see it's actually kind of small so we're going to zoom in so you can see what we got but it's set to the width of, uh, of a half a millimeter and then the height of one millimeter and that should work and you notice just depending on where your cursor is whether it does a cutout or a protrusion we'll just go ahead and, and do a protrusion along the inside edge all the way around and then of course we could go into the bottom and create either a groove or a lip so that these would actually fit together and complement each other and you can see that we've created this lip all the way around our model. One final cutout that I do want to add is across the top so I'm going to do a cut and I'm just going to go off of uh, let's just go off of the top reference plane and at that point I'm just going to pick up center with the line command and just kind of eyeball this. Now obviously I can add a dimension and, and put that exactly where I want it to be but I just want to kind of show you how easily we can do a, in this case a symmetric offset just by identifying that line it will develop a nice little cutout for us and then of course when that's done we can come out and we can extend that cutout to go through the model and our cutout is created so again once these models have been divided we can in place activate into them and continue adding features to them now when that's done we'll go ahead and save go back to our top level assembly turn on the bottom part and you can see how easy these particular uh, models have been created using our surfacing and then some of our uh, solid modeling uh, features have been added obviously we need to add some strengthening ribs and some bosses for mounting uh, purposes uh, but this gives you a general idea how easy it is to model in solid edge ST4